To the not 24 hour stream. Welcome, Bug Daddy's good to see you there. Welcome to just a standard run of the mill Wednesday live. Kayla there for the whole 24. Oh, Danielle there. Crafty gal there. Heck yeah, Lord Beth. Yes, only for a, a short bit. Where was I Sunday? I was recuperating after doing a 24 hour live on Thursday into Friday. Heck yeah. And if you missed part of it, the entire 24 hour live is available for viewing on YouTube. There's a 24 hour live playlist now where you can get all three recordings on there. Hey, Nikki, that's awesome. Rested up. Yep. 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 Still got a little bit of recuperating going on, but, but rested up. Jim, 16 hours is a long time. Danny, 23. Long time. Long time. Kelly missed seven hours, so you're watching the whole thing on YouTube. There you go. There you go. Tony Spark, you were there. The whole 24 hours, man. The whole time. Whole time. <laughs> you know, it's funny, though. We talk about it now, and I remember bits and pieces, but only as people talk about them and explain what happened. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that did happen. Did not lose my voice. Music just gave up for some reason. Uh, the whole... Yeah. Oh, there it goes again. Did not lose my voice somehow. Yeah, Tony was giving the hype speeches. We do have... We have a video uh, with some bloopers and special moments. It's going to post here shortly. I don't know if it's being posted right now. But we have a video going up with some special moments from the stream there for a lot it was a good time still recuperating my uh i don't know <clears throat> i don't know how it's been for tony but i i wake up feeling good and then about like two o'clock in the afternoon i'm like i need a nap my body's just like i just i don't have i don't have as much gas in the tank as i do to make it throughout the day right now I, i'm shoot i assume that's part of the recoup process it's gotta be tipsy thunder yeah tipsy thunder was here we have, uh, we're working on a, t on a Tipsy Thunder shirt design. Uh, Cup of Tea Daily. Oh, the winner, winner of the contest. What contest are you talking about? Oh, bingo? Gotcha. I think, uh, the plan for the, the bingo entries that were turned in is we're, is it for a contest or are we sending everybody something? Oh, he's punching in. Hey, we'll do it. Uh, I'm working on it. Um, I believe that we will select um, winners on Thunder and Spark when we film on Friday. So ah, okay. you'd have to tune in to the Thunder and Spark episode to find out the winners. Hey, there you go. There you go. Look, we got the BTS cam rocking again here, too. I got to move it. I got to move it to get Candy Thunder in here now. There we go. Now we got Candy Thunder in the BTS cam mix here, too. Also, I got to show you guys this. We have some new swag available at dusty-thunder.com. We have the I Survive or the 24 hour stream, 24 hour live stream survivor shirt design. And we have, we have the design for the raccoon that controls the weather. It is up to those two are up. We're working on some more, uh, but, but yeah, we have the 24 hour live stream survivor shirt and we have the, the raccoon who controls the weather. Those two are done. Those two are ready. You got to go check them out. It's a damn good time. The horse horse is a work in progress. I, I worked on it a little bit. Wasn't happy with where I was. So we're we have an idea for it. But actually making that I, that idea come to life is it's proving to be a little bit difficult. We are alive and well, Jen. Recovery is going well. I think it's still still a work in progress. 
Uh, do we do things in the studio other than TikTok and YouTube? We do, Becky. Uh, so we actually run a marketing agency out of here during the day. That's our day gig. Uh, we've got a number of clients that we do work for, like web design. We do a lot of video production, graphic design, um, audio stuff as well, and digital marketing strategy. We do quite a bit. And then the studio in the back that's on the other side of the wall from the shelves here is our actual studio where we do podcasts and photography and uh, video interviews and that kind of thing. That kind of thing. Raccoon should be named Nudge. There you go. We're going to punch the fish. It was a good time. And as we talked about today, it's our first live back since that 24-hour stream. We're like, wow, we're back already. What? Two hours? After 24? Two hours is like, like nothing. It's going to go by like this. Boop. We do, right? We, we we stay very very busy, very busy. It's been fun, and we do have a goal of three cables to get Tony Spark up here. I don't know if he has another uh, hype speech prepared or if it's going to be like a standard Tony appearance today. But he was hype speech man. I told him he had his brave heart moment up there. <laughs> Adventures with Pam J. Ginny on the block. Candy's under Elise Newman. Pamke again there, Rebecca73, Nat Lantitas Kane, The Fire, Jarby, Elise Newman, Tanya D, Michelle Heather, Rebecca73, Adventures with Pamke again, Unholy Emotes, Rolling with Life, Nat Plantitas again, Crystal Museum Girl, Grim, Prep, Prep Girl, Impic Girl, Unholy Emotes, User Lots of Numbers, Skelly, Grim, Beth Bars, Kel Jaworski, Dark Skull Faye. Steph, see you there as well. Pam K, Brandon Minardi, Christian Museum Girl, Donna DJ, La Book Dragon, Quinn, Janine Benham, Vagina, Brannigan, Carrie Lee, Justina, be present. Janine, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Wonder Woman, Jill, Chris, Adventures with Pam K, see you there as well. Michelle Heather, Dylan, see you there too, man. Thanks. Cup of tea daily, be a mulligan. Rhonda Sparks, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and rock and roll. Let's get this party started, shall we? It is weird. It is weird now being back up here after the 24 hour live because it's like my brain, my brain's expectations for what's about to happen, I think are, are along the 24 hour stream line of thought. I don't know. That's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. Coming up, we have stories about marriage Karens, buying cars without your spouse, cheap wedding guests, movie theater etiquette, housekeeper dilemmas secret wealth, blended family expectations, and of course, spicy stories and cake stories. We're at 871 to 3K to get Tony Spark up here to chat with y'all for a minute to say, hey, 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 Michelle, Heather, Steve, Shannon, all mercy, Rhonda Sparks, cup of tea. Thank you guys so much. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. And again, if you meant, if you missed it earlier on, we do have the entire 24 hour live available for viewing on YouTube. There's a playlist for it. And actually, if you go to um, if you go to Linktree, which is linked to my bio, the very top link takes you to that playlist. The link underneath that one is now for the new swag items that are on there too. Huge, huge, huge thank you to all of the mods and guests that we had last week for the 24 hour stream. Um, and a huge thank you to everybody who watched along, to everybody who sent us DoorDash things that kept us going throughout uh, the entire team here. It, it it took a village to make this thing happen, and you guys were all part of it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, as a reminder, piano back. Or piano back. <laughs> Words are going to be hard today. Piano Man is still available. Uh, ebook paperback, a hard cover on Amazon. That link is in Linktree as well. And we still have some hardcover books that are signed available for purchase in the TikTok shop as well. I think we still have some uh, some paperbacks there, too. Reminder to keep chat positive today. Be respectful. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinion and we don't all have to agree, but it costs nothing to be respectful and to be a DFHB. Decent friggin' human being. No spoilers, please. If you know the story that we're talking about, please don't spoil it for the rest of the chat. Spoilers will be muted, of course. And now it's time to get out to brooms. You know the rest. Let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling here. Our very first story today is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for telling a married woman her marriage sounds miserable? 
I-45 female attended a wedding a few weeks ago when a cousin, 55 female, was talking about how she wished I would marry. I heard the struggles of her marriage. She cheated. He took her back. They do everything he wants. She's given up her hobbies and learned to enjoy his. He controls the money and she works part time and she could never afford to live on her own, etc. For 20 years, I've heard how I should get married. I've always said it's not a priority and if it happens, it happens. I've repeatedly said throughout the years, I enjoy being single. I've been proposed to multiple times, and I like living life on my terms. I can embrace my hobbies, which are expensive, have a great job, live on my own, have great friends, I travel, and I have a and I've had great LTRs, long term relationships. All right, okay, I guessed it right. Hey, my life is full. I've been financially independent since I was twenty two, and she has never been financially independent. The entire family knows I'm generous with my time and money, whether it's a gift or helping somebody out financially without expecting repayment, electricity, groceries, school expenses, etc. Marriage has never been a priority to me. I finally had it with the comments and her not respecting my life. I finally told her I respect her opinions, but I felt like her marriage was that of convenience and sounded absolutely miserable to me. I would die a slow death if I was in a marriage like hers, all of which is true. I like being able to make my own decisions, and if the right person comes along, it's fine, but it's not a goal of mine, never has been. The look of shock on her face said it all. She didn't care for that and is painting me out to be mean. After 20 years of comments and pressure, I finally said what needed to be said to get the comments to stop. She couldn't fathom that somebody wouldn't want to have her life, and to me, it sounds like a prison sentence. She also can't fathom somebody could be happy living my life. So, am I the astronaut? Um, hell no. Hell, hell no. Yeah, Carrie Lee, this is this is just honesty. Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. And if she's been asking you why or pressuring you to get married and saying, you know, why why haven't you get married? Why isn't why isn't it a priority to be married? You love your life right now, and honestly. I think loving your life the way that it is, is fertile ground to meet somebody and have a successful relationship because there's no pressure on them. We've talked about that before, where you have to get to a place where you're happy and don't need someone else. And then that that is the easiest way to have a successful, at least beginning to a relationship, because there is no pressure there. Finding someone else who is in the exact same position is like the ultimate recipe for success. In this case, I don't know if it's if it's like denial that um what was this her sister her friend cousin her cousin uh, has so many restrictions on her life i can't imagine that she's actually happy or she's convinced herself that she is and maybe you know maybe that facade includes talking it up to other people maybe she has to talk it up to other people to to keep convincing herself that she's happy as well or maybe she is really happy with all the constraints that she has in her life and good for her that doesn't mean what works for you isn't going to work for everybody else. What makes you happy is not going to make everybody else happy. That's just not how it works. Everybody has their own priorities. They have their own definition of success. They have their own wants and desires and needs. It's not the same for everybody. So somebody pushing their life agenda on you and you finally, after 20 years, snap and you're like, shut the fuck up. I don't want that shit. I'm happy. Your life sounds like hell. They had it coming. Did they not? Did they not? But it's also funny how in, in the question here, it's am I the asking for telling a married woman her, her marriage sounds miserable. That's not really the part that uh, out of the couple of things that she said that that was more of a dig. I think it was the I would die a slow death in, in her life. That's the part of the statement that's like, oh, you took it one step further. It didn't matter. She kept pushing for 20 years. What did she think was going to happen? I mean, based on previous experience, she thought you were just going to take it and nothing would happen so you finally snapped it's the first time that's happened and and there it is halfway to the goal we're over 15 hundo to get tony spark up here 15 hundo more bolts to get him up here fame lady storm fly steph shock tattoo johnny joestar alana diana sos see you all there crystal as well uh gamer dad says i don't know about a village at uh 3 30 a.m it looked like you and tony barely surviving hey we were fine. We were fine. We we were fine. We were surviving. We were thriving. That's right. We were definitely definitely thriving. Three thirty a.m. That's like my sweet spot. Now, 
we had that broken up into into 12 two hour chunks of uh of content so so it became like each chunk of content was another wind so by the end we were catching our 12th wind um and yeah man looking back at it i think we i think we mentally and physically sustained much better than i thought we were going to and at that point it's like hell we could do 48 we could do 72 we just keep going Candy Thunder is glare. The glare of Candy Thunder is upon me. No, I don't. Uh, I, it may be four years before we we ever attempt that again, if ever. If ever. Michelle Heather throwing some bolts down there. Crystal Williams to Sparrows Homes. 2400. We're at 80% now. Still rocking. Rebecca Tila Smith. Steph Stark Tech 2. Elise Newman throwing some down there as well. Heck yes. Tracy, thank you. Good to see you there. Uh, you didn't drag at all. We were the hype the entire time, especially the last two hours. Last two hours, seeing that finish line was, yeah, that was uh, that was definitely another burst of energy there. We were. We could have we kept going. I did collapse underneath my desk right afterwards, though. What? I'm, we're not going to do it. I'm not saying that we're going to do it again. I said, I said, if ever, it would be at least another four years. I'm not talking about doing another one. Not talking about doing it longer. I collapsed underneath my desk. You know what the hardest part for me was? Uh, like I have I have lower back issues, so by the end of that, I couldn't sit because it was it was not comfortable. So I stood the majority of the time, and I could barely walk by the end of it. And I thought, man, I went home and crashed for a bit, and I thought, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to walk when I wake up. Woke up, back was totally fine. So it was awesome. I was just a little bitchy for a few days. I was a little bitchy. It's all right. I am self aware to know. That I was a little bitchy. Jen, the crafting postal worker. Yeah, we gained. Uh, so we grew our grew our YouTube channel by by about two k subscribers. Three. We'll call it, he said, "Let's call it three. Let's call it three. We did hit that goal. Let me give some thanks real quick here, and then we'll get Tony Spark up here. How about them apples? We're still gonna get the QOD up here talking about if you were here for the the twenty four hour leading the board this go round, Chef Tila. Elise Newman in the number two spot there. Lady Stormfly, Animal 792, Michelle Heather, Candy Thunder, Prep Girl, Adventures with Pam, Mama Joe, and Pickerel, Overkill Mill, Glinda Prosper, Lala, Sapphires 96, Snowman Collector, Fane, Dylan Sprague, Sherry Medic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Saint T. Steph Stark Tattoo. Two Sparrows. Two Sparrows Homes. They call me the Fire. Rebecca Barrett, Tanya D, a.k.a. T, Crystal Williams, Mercy the Hufflepuff, Faith1723, Nico80, Alicia Suvler, Brannigan Minardi, Lady M Butterfly, Cup of Tea Daily, Kelly McMillan, and M Bracker, Jenny the Block. Uh, we've got SN Reed, 6M, Justina, Blessed Wonder Woman, not for Cassie. Harrelson, Donna, 12661, Denise Burkhardt, NB the G, and S Null 93. Y'all are awesome. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. We're going to get Tony Spock up here next to, or after I get this next goal set up, which is going to get Candy Thunder up here for some feedback and do some confetti. Hopefully, this goal is still here. Hopefully. I'm looking. I think they changed it up, Tony Spark. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. What a bummer. They got rid of the tater in love on my end. We can't do it. What's a disappointment to talk? Candy. Feedback. And confetti. Let me pin that real quick. Pin it. All right, let's go ahead and get him up here for a little bit of discussion, ladies and gentlemen. You know him. You love him. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. Tony, Tony <laughs> Today. What's up, everybody? Hi, 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 hi. What's up? How's everybody feeling? Everybody good? Having a great Wednesday or Thursday, I guess it could be where you're at. 
Man, there's a lot of private video people up in here. Hey, 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 hey. I have been. I was, uh, I, we were talking about the recovery process and I think that there's, I think a big difference between my recovery and Dusty's recovery, Candy's recovery is the introvert versus extrovert aspect of it. And I'm an extrovert, so I think that mentally, I don't think I needed as much recovery. And also, I was on camera for about this much time compared to compared to Dustin being on there the whole time. So, yeah, but I'm good. I'm good. Had a great weekend. The weather was amazing. That helped, I think, too. Like being able to be outside. The weather was great. Played some golf. Went to a brewery. Yeah, being a single dude with no kids and being able to do whatever the fuck you want helped. That does help. That does help. Yeah. If you guys want to see how I recovered in the recovery process, you can follow at Tony Spark <laughs> underscore on TikTok. Posted some videos on there. Lots of posting content. Make sure you follow me. That's right. That's right. I feel like I didn't capitalize as much as I should have during the TikTok portions and even the YouTube portions of the stream. Cause it was like the third time we were live, we were on TikTok before I even plugged myself. So I thought I did pretty good. You and I, I'm, yourself. you know what I meant? That was a lot. That was, it was 24 hour stream. I that was too myself. fun. Okay. All right. Matt. So why we don't have kids all sick with the animals. So yeah, I post speaking of animals, I posted a video that has dogs in it. Tony Spark underscore. Check it out. The last story. Yeah, the last story was funny. But yeah, it was 4.15 in the morning. I was my eyes were getting a little heavy, and I'm like, man, I need because shockingly, all the stories weren't quite put together yet for the last couple hours of the show. And uh yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna. I need. I need a funny story, and I think I. T I think Candy and I talked about it. Like I was like, oh, I should write a story about it, and then 4:15 was, was just the time, and it happened. I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty darn good, right. if I say so myself. Right. Yeah, go check it out. Check out the. Uh, check out the 24 hour stream if you haven't watched it. There's lots of lots of good moments. Lots of good moments. I'm going to post it here in a second. I haven't posted it yet. Yeah. After the stream. Yeah, right after the stream. Do what? When the stream's ending, we're going to post uh, the blooper reel. Miles put together a great blooper reel slash highlight reel. Some great moments, some funny moments. It's great. It was a good time. Yeah, Francis. I feel like we got a lot more time. Dusty got a lot more time to obviously 24 hours compared to two. There was a lot of talking to chat and a lot of, a lot of interaction. That was cool. About the twelve unread stories from that day. Well, Natalie, fun fact: we weren't quite twelve unread stories. We read all the stories that we had in our inventory. All of them. Yeah. Okay. All of them. There was a bunch of docs that I didn't finish, but <clears throat> no. Move those stories over. Those were the docs. Those were the staging docs that uh, went into another doc. Gotcha. I think there might have been two stories on the last block that didn't get read that I think I put in today's. So they'll be on here today. 100 was our goal, Natalie. Um, that was the goal, was to have 100. Um, the pace kind of kind of flowed. And so some hour, some blocks we got in the full eight stories, some we got a little less. So we just, just moved around. Caden's... So. Uh Caden's singing and rapping, rapping, dancing, You're singing, probably going to find it in that blooper. Room. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably, I, I would. Yeah. Caden singing Aladdin. Yep. That, that's probably in that blooper reel too. Yeah. 88 though, I think was the final story count so. that you read. So I think so. Got through 88 stories in 24 hours. See and son. Yes. It, it is the wild. entire live unedited mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. Are you ready? Very giggly. We were. Yeah, there was a point where that stuff was just really funny. But anyway, <laughs> bye, guys. Still Fo is. Follow Tony Spark underscore. Everything's still funny. More is word of the day. Petifogging. Place undue emphasis on petty details. Arguing over trivial things. Alexis, now is not the time for petifogging.
and Daily Dose of Moira there. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump over to our next story here. We're at 460 of 2K to get Candy Thunder up for some feedback. Can I get some feedback? Um, and hopefully we get there during the story because I think this is the story she wants to give feedback to. Let's rock and roll. Uh, let's rock and roll. Silverstorm. Welcome to the Gosh Hacking fam. Tom, Cassie, TLS, Samantha, MJ, Newcomb, Just Mags, Andrea. Welcome to the Gosh Hacking fam. Glad to have you here. User 949, lots of numbers with the team bracelets. Thanks so much for that. Hard KC there. Thanks so much. TLS, Tila Smith, Carrie Lee, Elise, Overkill Mill, Tila Smith. Uh, this is Pamela L, little red Corvette girl, Natalie, Dylan. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Becky, Jilly5, Prep Girl Faith. Skip to story three. So story three. Okay. Excuse the one she'll give you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, here we go. It's Dusty Thunder, and here's another story for you. This one comes from the AITA subreddit as well and is titled, Am I the astronaut for not hosting my father at our home and for not paying for his hotel? I, Lily, 34 female, and Jason, 31 male, are getting married in August on a tight budget due to focus on saving money. I have student loans to pay off and recently bought a house, leaving little extra cash. My father, Mason, 62, wasn't very present in my life growing up after my mom. Beth, 60 female, divorced him 32 years ago. He missed birthdays and was absent during my upbringing. We're not accommodating any guests traveling for the wedding at our home due to limited space and wanting privacy on our wedding night. Understandable. My dad flying 3,000 miles with his wife for our wedding has two government pensions and his wife has a good job. He also works part-time for extra cash, making over $30 an hour. Despite his financial stability, he tends to over-discuss his finances with me and boasts about his wealth. However, when we visit, he often leaves us to pay for everything, insisting on expensive outings and meals. Even when I was struggling... Even when I was a struggling university student, he would make me pay for my share or contribute to groceries for family dinners. During his last during his visit last summer, he ordered extravagantly at restaurants and made my husband feel uncomfortable by expecting him to cover the bill. He even complained about using points to treat his grandson to a movie. My dad dislikes spending on others and goes to great lengths to avoid it. My father says he can only afford three nights at a hotel, which has upset my brother. He's angry that we're not hosting our father and his wife and that we're not covering their hotel costs for one to two nights. Jason and I feel it's unfair to pay for their stay when they take multiple trips to Mexico each year. While they have the right to spend their money as they wish, we believe that they should have budgeted for our wedding. We simply want our home to ourselves on our wedding night and the week leading up to it without the added stress of hosting them. Jason and I simply don't have the extra money right now. Despite explaining this to my brother, he's upset that we won't cover any nights for dad. I've made it clear that we won't discuss our finances further. Now my brother is calling me horrible, selfish, and cheap and refuses to believe me. He's pressuring me relentlessly and insists that I'm lying. He can be very mean when things don't go his way. Even my mother believes I should pay for my dad's hotel stay. Am I the astronaut for not covering my hotel, my father's hotel stay or hosting him for our wedding? I paid my own way when he got married in Mexico and I'm never and never expected anyone else to cover my expenses. I'm getting mixed responses from people and I'm not sure how to handle it. Any advice would be appreciated. I would say to you right now, OP, anybody who has an opinion on anything here, you have to look at their motive and you have to look at the source of information that they have, right? Uh, your brother who is pissed off about it, why would he potentially be angry about this? Is it because if your father says he's not going to stay in a hotel room these two nights, there's a high likelihood he's going to be asking your brother to stay at his brother's house, maybe? Wink, wink. And your your brother doesn't want to deal with him? He doesn't want to have to host him? So, of course, he's pissed and trying to guilt you into doing it? That is a That is a high probability scenario here. Your mother, I don't know, I don't know what the the story is there, but but you are under no obligation to host anything for him, right? At this point, he is lucky that he got invited to the wedding. It sounds like so. If he wants to be there, he can figure it out. It is not your job to accommodate him. You have enough going on. It's the week of your wedding. It is not a big bougie all expense paid trip for everybody in the family and if it were he would be involved in paying for that so if he wants to be there he can suck it and suck it up and deal with it pretty sure he can use his points or whatever to cover a a couple more nights in the hotel or yeah you can go stay with your brother or your mom let one of the people who are bitching about it Do something about it rather than bitch at you about it. 
I haven't heard any solutions from any of them yet. It's just, oh yeah, you're an asshole. You should be doing this. Really? Really? Why don't you do it? Well, it's not my wedding. No, it's, I don't care. And yet you still have an opinion on it somehow. NTA. NTA. Don, yeah. I mean, in the traditional sense, the dad would be the one who who is paying for his daughter's wedding, right? So he's not having to contribute to that at all. I think he can afford to put himself up in a hotel for a couple of nights. Yeah, you don't you don't need you don't need the added stress of a family staying in your house the week of your wedding. That is no bueno. Michelle, yeah, why would the solution not be the brother hosting dad? It feels like it should be, and I think that's why the brother is is laying the guilt on thick because he doesn't want to deal with it. Again, you have to question motives. What are the motives of the people who are giving you a hard time? And also what's their source of information? I think you have to look at those two things. Francis, good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Nona, thanks for the shares. Greatly appreciate that. There was another question up here or a, a comment. I think it was Piano Man related. Cannot find it. It's gone. It's gone. I've lost it forever. I'm so sorry that you all, that you are all not going to be able to make it to my wedding. I, I think that's it. It's like, if you have a problem that prevents you from, from attending, that's a you problem. I got enough problems trying to put on a wedding right now. I don't need your problems tacked on to my list of problems right now. Deal with it. He's a 62-year-old grown-ass man. He can figure it out. Ah, Michelle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it was talking about the ending of Piano Man. It was good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate that. <clears throat> Lee, I do, uh, yeah, I do do a little bit of it. Uh, mostly on here, though. Do some advertising voiceover work. Mags, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. If you host something, are you not supposed to provide accommodations? She used wrong wording. Uh, to host them. I think she was saying that, that everybody is saying that she should host them. Um, also... Flipping this back to the occasion she mentioned as as examples, whenever she would go to see him, he would take them out to expensive places and then force OP's fiance to pay for things. That's not how that works either. If you pick the place, if you ask someone out to dinner, the etiquette is that whoever asks someone out to dinner is supposed to be the one who pays for it, right? That's that's classic etiquette. Dad's dad is uh sounds like a cheap weasel who is just doing everything he can at every instance that he can to try to get out of paying for stuff. And <laughs> dude, it's your daughter's wedding. This is not the time. Okay. This is not the time to be playing that cheap ass game. It is not the time. And if you are gonna play that game, don't play it with your daughter who's getting married. Pick something else. Pick something else. Yeah, yeah, they could have, Leslie, they could have worked with a, with a, a local hotel and gotten a block of rooms. But it sounds like, the, for the most part, he may be one of the only people that's traveling in. Pretty much everybody else is local. He's traveling some some 3,000 miles. Jackie, yes, uh, on the YouTube channel, we actually have, um, we have a lot of the podcasts on there. But we also have a Spotify channel that has a bunch of the podcasts on there, too. Dad is an ass, Mrs. M. Bash. We had a family friend who always forgot his wallet after he ordered expensive food. We've had some stories about that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's convenient. It's convenient. Brother could pay. Yeah, brother, brother. The only thing brother has offered to this point is complaints. Let's see. Let's let's see a solution here. Cyrus, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate that. Tony Sparks sending some high bears through as well. TLS Mazimbash, Maz Stringer, Autumn, Harley Bitch. Uh, Estella, Annalise, and Boo Boo, Charlie Diego, Sherry Medic. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate that. Glenda saw you up there as well. Let's go ahead and rock on from this one. This was an NTA. It's uh, the people who are guilting you, especially when it comes to family. If family is guilting you over something, you legitimately have to look at motives. Uh, and and it's, it's the first thing we do every time we hit a story like this. Because family members have a unique ability. Maybe it's just siblings, parents uh, also that 
that have like a direct line to your guilt call center, right? They're like, hey, I know how to push the buttons. I know how to make this thing sing. Let's go. And they just uh, lay the guilt on thick, but it's usually to end some kind of pain or prevent some kind of pain for themselves. It's garbage. Rach, uh, Lydia, thanks for the shares. Greatly appreciate that. Ms. Imbash, your dad also promised to pay for your wedding and then refused to pay when the time came. That's cool. That's, uh, that's damaging. <laughs> Good gravy. Good gravy. All right, let's go ahead and bounce over to our other one there. Rach with a whole bunch of shares. Thank you. Greatly appreciate that. Liv, Harley bitch, um, Mags. Thank you guys. Great. Aunt Sue, I see you there as well. Thank you guys so much. Amberly with a share there too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Rangel, AITA for getting back with my ex because his girlfriend changed the Netflix password. <laughs> I mean, uh, how big of an inconvenience is your ex being an ass for? And is it more than the, what is it, 14 bucks a month now for Netflix? Is it 20 something now? I guess I need to pay more attention. Sophia, thank you. We're alive. We're alive, Mrs. Embash. Yeah, send that in or post it on the Dusty Thunder uh, subreddit. If you have a story to submit, the preferred method for posting is to go on the Dusty Thunder subreddit. You're going to get the most feedback, the quickest feedback, and it still gets it on our radar for a chance to be uh, covered in the show here as well. Lee Lee, thanks for the shares. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, MX Manners, uh, 25 bucks a month. Oh, holy cow. 780 of 2K on the high bears to get Candy Thunder up here right now. Uh, Robin Hazen, is the piano man in print to be purchased? Uh, it is, yeah. So there's an Amazon link. If you go to Linktree, link to my bio, uh, there is like a Dusty's Books link, and it takes you to actually the ebook, the paperback, and the hardcover that are available. Or in the TikTok shop, we have the, uh, the paperback and the hardcover signed copies available for purchase there as well. Yep, I mean, all the subscriptions are getting more expensive. And, you know, Netflix, whenever they started doing big blockbuster type Netflix series, I get it. You know, they're throwing a ton of resources as resources at making quality content. And that's one thing. But not everything can go up. There's a, there's a point when you have to just start making decisions about what you're going to keep and what you're going to ditch. And then they pull crap like putting one of the freaking playoff games uh, for the NFL on Peacock. And then you got to get Peacock, right? Gotta have Prime for the. I mean, you got Prime anyway, right? But all the things that you have to have just start stacking up. Ugh. Uh, Doodles Dragon, you should be able to just go straight to my profile. And uh, when you go to my profile, there are those those few different tabs, right? So it will show the shop will look like. Let me pull it up real quick and take a look just so I can make sure I'm sending you the right info here. Um, the shop should have the little uh, like shopping bag looking thing there. You should be able to hit that. Unless you're in KC and then it's just on TV. Yeah. Yep. 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 Apple TV. Yeah. Yeah. Sue back. I got to pay extra for prime without commercials. Now, is that even an option? Can you get prime without commercials? They just added commercials to prime. And I'm like, Oh, I guess we have commercials now. Oh, here we go. Tony spark. I it also in. just noticed the other day that all of a sudden my Disney plus has commercials. That's a n- new thing. I'm sure I have to go pay extra to get that, but I'm like, this is getting ridiculous. So we haven't noticed it on the kids programming yet, but maybe that's maybe it's like if if it is specifically kids programming, maybe it doesn't show up then. Four ninety nine per month more. What is that? I mean, look, we make commercials. This is part of our job, but. But we are not part of that problem. I yeah. can assure you I that. I like added it up and you add up all the the deals the other day. It's like $85, $89 a month in between Disney and Prime, Netflix, Peacock, Paramount. It just never stops. It's ridiculous. At this point, it's cheaper to just go back to cable. <laughs> yeah, t- Tony, I, you know, Tony Spark, you know, Ted reserves a, a portion of funds for, for from Tony Spark every month, right? That's, that's the Ted fund and uh, subscriptions are starting to dip into the Ted fund. Ted's going to get angry. You don't, you don't want to make, <laughs> you don't want to get Ted cut off or angry. That's not good. That's not good. It's all pharma commercials. Yeah, that's fun. What's uh, what is it? Your favorite oh, one? Nah. The favorite. What is it? Tony Spark has a, has a favorite 
pharmaceutical Take commercial. one's daily Jardians. There it is. Jardians. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Small round of applause there. All right, I'm going to dive over to the next story here. We're at 941 and 2K on the High Bear Goals right now to get Candy Thunder up here. She's gone to pick up kiddos, and we'll be back, uh, and we'll have her jump in. Then we have a, a story reserved for her to give feedback on here. So what is Jardians used for? No idea, but they have a, like a music video. All right, here we go. Next story here. I'll try to remember to do a little intro-y type thing for it. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is, am I the astronaut because I won't pay to continue housekeeping services for my wife? My wife is someone who has always had a housekeeper from a young age. When we first discussed moving in together before marriage, the division of chores was a hot topic. I was on team, we can do it ourselves, and she wanted to keep using the housekeeping service she had. Ultimately, I had agreed to the housekeeping service after both of our parents told me it'd be easier to agree to make her happy. My only thing was that it was a service she was responsible for paying for. She started out having them come every other week, then once a week to every other day to keep the house as clean as she liked it and do things like her laundry and emptying the trash in her hobby room. Mid-January, my wife was let go and her company downsized. She's been having a hard time finding a job in her field. For now, she's working part-time at retail. We weren't making amazing money before she was let go, but we live comfortably due to due in part to living below our means for the most part. Since her current job doesn't pay much, I said that I would cover all of our joint expenses. For example, mortgage, property tax, utilities, and our phones so she doesn't have to deplete her savings and our savings won't suffer as much either. She paid for the cleaning service in February, but then yesterday asked me if I was going to set up a direct pay with the cleaning company or transfer her the money to keep paying them. It's $190 a week, I told her. Neither. The housekeeping service was something that she wanted and was responsible for. If we, sorry, if she can't afford it anymore without dropping her savings below a point she's comfortable with, then we don't need it. And I'm not going to pay for something two able-bodied adults are perfectly capable of doing themselves. We argued. She says, I know how much she hates cleaning and that it stresses her out. And since the housekeeper cleaned up areas like the kitchen and living room and made the bed sometimes, I was benefiting from... I was benefiting from it, so it counts as a joint expense. I told her it doesn't count because I'm perfectly happy to clean up after myself and have cleaned rooms before when they needed it between visits. Fast forward to today, and she thinks I'm still being a jerk by not paying for it. Am I being an asshole anywhere here? Edited to add, I've been doing housework even with the housekeeper. I do my laundry. I make our bed most days. I clean up after our pets, clean the kitchen after we cook, and that includes the oven, stove, microwave. I take out the trash and recycling and clean the AC filters. I dust between visits. I'll sweep and clean the bathrooms between visits, clean up the shower and sinks after each use. I pick up after myself. Most of what the housekeeper does is already done by the time she shows up. If my wife is home, then it's her mess that gets cleaned up on her or her clothes, plates, and items that she leaves around. The housekeeper also cleans her hobby room, does her laundry, and whatever else my wife asks. She's just used to having a daily cleaner due to her childhood. So the question here is, am I the astronaut because I won't pay to continue housekeeping services for my wife? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an NTA because... <sighs> because you don't have the ability to sustain that right now. It, it there's a, there's a blurry line between it being like a luxury and a necessity, right? She views it as a necessity because the way she's lived her life to this point, she always had that resource to be able to lean on. Now I will say I advocated for a long, long, long time uh, for candy thunder to let us bring someone in to help with cleaning stuff every like one day, every other week. Um, and she was extremely opposed to it for a long time finally won that battle and now she says it's the best thing we've ever done in our life here's why there well obviously our lives are crazy hectic and busy right and that that is a that is a contrast here so if um they don't have kids they have you know they have more time to be able to knock these kind of things out but what gets triggered whenever you know you have a housekeeper or a cleaning person coming is that you scramble and do a lot of cleaning yourself which is so it creates some accountability on our end to be able to at least once every every other week do a hurried round of of cleanup and putting stuff away we're more likely to keep things cleaner if uh if that kind of thing happens 
in their case here, they finally hit a point where they just can't sustain it. And if it's something that they can't afford, they can't afford. The flip side of that coin is what is your time worth, right? I would actually have to do the math here and I would say, okay, these are the tasks that this person is doing. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to try to do it myself for a couple months or whatever it is and actually measure the time that it takes me and then compare that to the amount that you pay for it and say, is my time worth more per hour doing something different? Can I be applying this time to actually focusing on something that makes money uh, and, and save money essentially by letting someone else do this? There is, there is that balance in there that has to happen at some point and everybody's time is valuable. How valuable it is depends on a number of different factors, but I would mathematically have to evaluate it here in OP stance on it. That is just a, just a flat out. This is a luxury uh, this is a luxury that you got used to. I'm not paying to keep it going. I would actually do some scientific testing with. I would test out and see if it is mathematically worth it um, or or if it's something that is truly a luxury there. In which case, you can pause it and then come back whenever you're able to do it again. You can do that. So uh, this is a... You guys get a... You guys get on... Words are hard. You guys got to get on the same team. You got to get on the same page. Um, and have at least some kind of agreed approach here. Obviously, she doesn't like to do this kind of stuff, and that's okay. But OP, you have to understand that if you're saying no to this, that you're going to be picking up the slack on this kind of thing. So, and you can try to you can try to get her her looped in on helping you do things too. Just expect a lot of opposition there. So, it's you're an NTA here. Uh, but you're going to have a lot of opposition moving forward. And before you get firm on saying, hell no, this is n definitely not something we're going to do. I would apply some math to it first and actually do some measuring and see if if the time value in it is actually mathematically efficient for for you to have someone else do it. And and again, that depends on a lot of things. So. So, yeah, not every other day. I mean, you could definitely cut if she's to the point where she's got somebody coming every other day. But it started off every other week. Time to kick it back to every other week. And you can do the in-between stuff for now or once a month or whatever it is. There needs to be some kind of adjustment there. Um, and I'd, there has to be a little bit of give and take from both sides here, right? She's in a pickle and knows that that she's not making as much as she was. So there has to be some, some give on her end here. I also think on OP's end here having this firm line of the sand and saying absolutely no way there needs to be a little bit more thought put into to determine if it's something that's uh that's that it's something that they can actually do more efficiently he says two able-bodied people can do this yeah okay but yeah of course uh two able-bodied people can also replace your roof but you hire people to do that so i'm just saying it, it's something worth evaluating a little bit closer and a little bit more critically before just saying just hard no right at least that's how I would approach it. Uh, pretty darn yarn, but also she sounds kind of childish, but I don't want it because I don't like it. Agreed. And her background has everything to do with that, right? She had she she's had help uh, at home ever since she was a kid. And I'm sure that is a lifestyle that is hard to break. So there's going to be there's going to be some shock to the system going on there. But that's also one of the harsh realities of the world, right? Like you you can only afford what you can only afford. And at least OP has this pragmatic approach and is, is saying, look, if it's going to dip you below a point that you're comfortable with in your savings, then you've got to, you got to find a way to prevent that from happening. So it's got the foresight to say, we need to cut these things out. Now. Um, I think there might be a scenario here where it's more efficient than OP is thinking that it is, but that would require some testing. Yeah, and it uh, Sloan is that her fault that her that her lifestyle that she was brought up like that? I mean, not no, and not entirely. I mean, she's a product of her environment, right? So, so the way that her parents brought her up, maybe the way that her parents were brought up too, and you just have to step back and back and back and back and back. But it, uh, none of that changes the reality that she's in right now, and it's not sustainable to keep going what she's doing right now and the expectation that she has right now. So something has to give there. Something has to give. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, Mags, you're right. It's not that difficult to maintain a two-person household unless one of them's really messy. Um, 
at the end of the day, I mean, it all comes down to you guys doing it yourself, right? Like cut everything out. It would be on you to, to handle those things yourself. So do it that way. Test it for a while and see what the math says. 1080 at 2K. We're over the halfway point to get Candy Thunder up here to give feedback for a story. Uh, Jen, feel like a cutback is a fair compromise and reevaluate later. I think, yeah. Um, the other thing that he has to think about there is that you've got, yeah, you're, you're going to free up some, some funds by not allocating it to this, especially not every other damn day. Um, but you're also going to have the shock, the shock, um, to her system to deal with. And there's going to be backlash from that. So he's going to, he's going to create some pain for himself in this process too. And I would in, in his position, I would much rather ease into that than create it all at once, right? Just ease into that step it down gradually over a couple of months, something so that you at least hedge against a major flip out uh, and, and a, a major altercation with your relationship there. I think you can approach it slowly and cautiously. Every other day. It started off every other week, and then she gradually had it more and more and more to every every other day. That's quite a bit. Blurred. Uh, it's her fault. She acknowledged her privileged life and chose to live in that non-reality. Yeah. I mean, you, you also can't ignore that there's going to be pain created with that change, though. Uh, pain creates change, right? But change creates pain sometimes, too. Um, and in this case, this change would create some pain, even for OP. And, and I feel like right now he's not seeing that. So there's there are some other factors to look at here before making a, a firm decision. Max says rip the bandaid off. You can do that too. Just acknowledge the pain that you're going to be working through. Every other day is wild. It, it is wild. Um, you know, like uh, we've got we got five kids, two dogs, a cat, uh, and. And we're crazy busy, and I don't think we make enough of a mess to have somebody come every other day. That's just, yeah. I'd have to actually actively be trying to make messes all the time to to, <laughs> to do that. Natasha says, I think the universe is hinting at me to clean. Nah, I wasn't. No. <laughs> That's not what it was. Unrelated. Unrelated story there. Denise Fort. Yeah, work 14 hours a day. I mean, the other side of that is because you work 14 hours a day, you're not home making messes during those times, right? Animal, she just lost her job, so it sounds like she's just using the cleaning lady as company. That's possible. That's possible. Someone to talk to if OP is away. Hey, it's entirely possible. They could be they could be friends. They could be. What was your cue card? Next. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna jump over to the next story here. <laughs> Did I? Did I? I did. I'm just, I'm lost. I'm just skipping all around the document here. I don't know what's going on. 1142 of 2K on the high bears goal right now. Ash Tay, Anna Hansen, Kara Bites, TLS, Vicky, Juju Girl, Leanne, uh, Vicky again there, Kelly McMillan, Leanne C. Larson, Vero and Dan, Amber L. Hickey C. Larson, TLS, Mandy, Jocelyn, you guys are awesome. Shannon, Aaron, Eli, hope to see you there as well. Thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, we're going for high bears right now, trying to get 2K to get Candy Thunder up here. All righty, our next story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Throwing a Piece of Popcorn at Someone Who Kept Using Their Phone During a Movie? I hope they pulled it out of one of those Dune popcorn buckets that have been a hot topic of discussion here in the studio today. They're interesting looking. The title is pretty self-explanatory, but here are the details. We went to see Dune 2. Holy hell. It was one of the, maybe. They didn't have the cool popcorn buckets here, Caden Thunder says. So, Yeah, it's, it's uber relevant. We went to see Dune 2, highly recommend, last night in a VIP theater with comfy seats and table service, which I mentioned because to attend, you must be 19 plus. They serve real drinks. Seated two rows ahead of us were three young women, 19 to 22, I'd guess. They didn't shut up during any of the previews and spoke loudly to each other throughout the movie, which is annoying, but fortunately, hardly unique these days. But unfortunately, hardly unique these days. But what was incredibly annoying, starting at about 20 minutes into the movie, one of them got onto her phone. She was only two rows ahead of us, and it was full brightness, so it'd be an understatement to say it was distracting. 
She'd text, scroll Instagram, watch TikTok videos for a few minutes, then put it down. Ten minutes later, out came the phone again. After the third time, I said quite loudly, Put the phone away! She looked back, gave me a look like, Shut the fuck up, old man. But put it down. And then ten minutes later, pulled it out again. Again, full brightness. So I got a piece of popcorn and threw it at her. Hit her on the head, and as you can imagine, she turned around... Are you fucking serious right now? Yeah, I'm serious. Can't you live without your phone for a couple of hours? Shh, said someone. Shut up, said someone else. She put it away, and then maybe 20 minutes later, out it came again. I threw another piece of popcorn, which barely missed but flew by her face. She put the phone away, and it stayed away for the rest of the movie. Nobody stood, nobody clapped, nobody really cared. And that might have been the end of it, except after the movie, she quite bluntly said to her friend as we were walking out looking at me, that's the asshole. In telling others about this this morning, I've come to understand that movie theater etiquette has changed from when I was 20. Back then, of course, there weren't phones, but it was unheard of to engage in behavior that would be distracting to others. And when phones appeared 30 years ago, you'd never get in on it during the movie. And you'd never get on it during the movie. And if you had to, you'd walk out and deal with it. But these days, this is par for the course. Anyway, if I'm paying $25 per ticket plus food and drinks, expensive, plus parking for a night out and a true theater experience, I'd like to enjoy. I'd like to enjoy it with what I think is the environment all of that deserves. I can watch movies at home and get on my phone all I want for free. This is supposed to be different. Am I out of touch? Am I the astronaut? Is this okay these days? And maybe that behavior is not okay, but am I the astronaut for throwing a couple of popcorn kernels at someone? It was certainly effective. Interesting. Let's hear what you think here, chat. All right, let's let's talk first about phone usage at movie theaters. Uh, also, let's talk about phones being on full brightness and full volume all the time instead of like adaptive brightness or, you know, not having it at what I call grandma volume uh, all the time. That's something. Yeah, you can get them kicked out by by talking to staff. You could report them and then they have ushers that are that would actually come come address it. OK, so I think we have a consensus. It is it's not OK to use use your phone during the during the movie. Uh, what about throwing the piece of popcorn trying to get her to stop? Is that an asshole move? I think this is an addiction issue. From from the way that OP describes the behavior, it's like every 20 minutes. It's just like by habit that phone comes out. It's like she got bored in her mind in the instant that she got bored. Uh, her, her reaction was to pull out the phone. I think that's an addiction issue. Not an asshole. Not an asshole. She's a child. Not that not that serious. Big fan of mind your business. <laughs> just talk to the staff. Uh, yeah, they, uh, Mama Kitty, they have that in the U.S. too. It is, you know, there's, there's all, always notices, I think, everywhere in the world to not be on your damn phone during a movie. Marine, he didn't insult her or was aggressive. Popcorn is fine. The popcorn yesterday. Popcorn throwing wasn't the whole bucket or anything, right? Yeah. Phones are everywhere. Yeah, but I mean, in a movie theater, when you know that you are distracting people behind you because they've spoken up about it and you continue doing it uh quoting stevie wonder from one of the first podcasts we did if you're made aware that you could do something differently or better and you choose not to do it then you're making a choice to be an asshole she made a choice to be an asshole i do think there's an addiction issue here that she she doesn't have control over it anymore she just that phone is an addiction looking at your looking at her screen hacks so she had she was she was a couple rows in front of OP, but had the phone on full brightness. So if you're in a dark theater and somebody has a bright ass phone, that's like flashlight brightness uh, in front of you, it's going to be distracting. People were shushing him too. Ah, yeah, when they got into a disagreement. Yeah. But, but those people were probably distracted by the whole, the whole phone bullshit too. <laughs> alley alley cat yeah popcorn throwing animal house 
If you can't leave your phone down, stay home. I would agree with that. I think it, I mean, every, I think we have a consensus that, that using your phone, especially full brightness during a movie. I mean, look, if you got kids and you need to pull it out to check a message real quick, that's fine. Don't have it on full brightness. Don't have it on full volume and don't be an asshole about it. In this case, it was repeated. It was repeated. So the drastic measure he chose to take was to throw a piece of popcorn, which is harmless. Uh, and who cares that she called you an asshole? Who cares? Let me reset this. We've got a lot of NTAs going here. Maybe, maybe I'm going soft after the 24 hour stream and we have a lot of people who are just NTA. Uh, but, but look, it's pull your phone out to check it real quick or something. This was, this was, um, boredom triggered addiction and, and just being completely oblivious to your surroundings or not giving a shit. Uh, that you are offending people around you because she knew it was offensive, but still kept doing it. So it just didn't give a shit, right? Wonder Woman, yeah, not the consequences of her actions. Uh, Trish, yeah, yeah, you could use your watch to reply to text with as well. Don't react to it like a kid, Ms. HH. I mean, there were definitely other options, and maybe technically this puts OP at uh, at a four because they could have done it differently. They could have went and reported it. And actually, that probably is they should have done because it actually would have changed something. If an usher came down with a flashlight and was like, yo, keep it put away or we're going to have to ask you to leave, it probably would not have happened again. She didn't respect OP enough to actually listen to them or respect their wishes. Um, and probably in large part because of of the approach of throwing popcorn. That just escalated things, right? There's escalation and then, there, then there's solutions. So maybe, maybe OP actually is a four. I'm not going to give them that. Because uh, it would piss me off pretty good, too. You feel bad when your little watch light goes on to see the time? As long as, long as you're being respectful about it and trying not to make it a big deal. I mean, everybody at some point in the movie has had to pull their phone out and check a message and put it right back up, right? It happens. Just be, just be respectful about it. And they don't refund your money if they kick you out, Victoria. Hey, see? See? Uh, Flock up says, what about those with light sensitivity that would give you a migraine? Would you also be at risk of that migraine um, just by watching the movie, though? T, you would have to miss parts of the movie to find to leave and find an usher. No more than he missed by having an altercation. You know what I mean? I think the I think the time argument there is a little bit of a cow's opinion. It's moo. It's moo. 14 hundo of 2k candy thunder is back now so we can unlock that thing and read that story and get her feedback on it uh bubsy heather victoria renee willits becky morlock juju girl mary olivia marie tls fane aunt sue tony spark mary again there justina katisi jocelyn tls julia cox samantha Girus, mandy jerry Lego fourth anna hansen blurred hulk Thank you guys so much. Kitty Cartel, uh, Gamer Mama, Skate Ballerina. See you there as well. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the love here. Call the movie theater. There you go. There you go. We're going to get uh, Candy Thunder's feedback on the next one, hopefully, if we can unlock this thing. It's like a cow's opinion. It's moo. It's moo. From Friends. Friends quote. It's from Friends. Okay, we're going to bounce to our next story here. Uh, I don't know. You think it's safe at this point to read the story that we want to get Candy Thunder's feedback on? I think so. Uh, we have a little over 500 high bears to go. Hopefully we can hit that while I'm reading this story so Candy Thunder can get up here. Candy Thunder, have you read this story? Do you know that? Okay, so uh, so perk your ears up. This is this is your designated feedback story. Red eye? We're going to hit it. We're at 1560 now. I'm climbing. We're going to hit it. People's, people are going to get Candy Thunder feedback going on up here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and dive in on it. We're going to roll the dice. This story is from the AITA subreddit as well, and is titled, Will I be the astronaut if I bought a car without my partner's blessing? Interesting choice for Candy Thunder's feedback, Tony Spark. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, 34 female, have always wanted an SUV Porsche since I was a girl. It's Porsche. Uh, my husband, 36 male, and I do very well for ourselves. Oh, come on. TikTok thinks I've been inactive. It makes us do this puzzle every once in a while now to keep our stream going. It's fun. We're not sleeping on a stream, TikTok. I promise. I, 34 female, have always wanted an SUV Porsche since I was a girl. 
My husband, 36 male, and I do very well for ourselves. We earn over a little 150K each, so a combined household income of over 300K. Unlike my partner, I grew up poor from absent, uneducated migrant parents. I worked hard with little support, put myself through school, and climbed the career ladder. When I was younger, my best friend had the life I was so envious of. Loving parents, a warm home, and security. I aspired to be like her mom, a gorgeous woman who openly loved her kids and was active in their lives. She also drove a Porsche, as well as a lot of other rich soccer moms. It became the thing I wanted to have since the... It became the thing I wanted to have since the made it item. I'm not a materialistic person. I do not own or care for luxury brands. I do not gamble. My dad continuously lost the family savings, do drugs, or have money money pit hobbies i currently drive a 1999 toyota that refuses to die while my husband drives a sports car he bought for around 70k before we met when we married i brought a i brought about 60k more into the relationship our finances are completely combined and we're lucky that we don't need to think or worry about finances besides our home which is fully offset we have no other debts we are expecting our first child and looking into buying an suv and replacing my death trap he is the car person, and I am not. I want to buy a Porsche while he is strongly against it, despite knowing my reasons as mentioned. These are his reasons. One, you are paying for the brand. I know. Two, other cars in that price range offer way more features. It doesn't even compare to what's on the market in terms of tech safety and inclusions. Three, it doesn't have a lot of room or boot space. Four, it does not offer a comfortable driving experience. There are more reasons, but those are the main ones. He's happy to support us in car buying within that price range, his preference being a Volvo or a Lexus. I understand that his reasons are valid, and no, my desire for this car is emotionally driven. I don't even know, I don't even care if it's secondhand, but he also strongly is against this. I feel like I deserve this one materialistic thing my heart wants, and that I've worked hard to be in a position to afford it. So before I potentially do something irreversibly, Will I be the astronaut if I put my foot down, tell him I'm buying this car, and go to the dealership and buy it myself without his agreement? Edit. Edit to add that it would be an SUV, ideally the Cayenne, or Cayenne, how do you, however you say it, but happy if it was the Macan. And we hit the high bear gold. Let's give some thanks for that real quick, and we can get Candy Thunder up here to talk about it. Why do I feel like I'm just queued up to get roasted here? I feel like... I feel like I'm on a barbecue skewer and y'all are lighting the fire and just getting ready to turn me and put an apple in my mouth. That's what I feel like right now. If the shoe fits. <laughs> if the car fits. All right, let's 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 give some thanks here real quick. I'm going to get the new swag up here while we talk about it. This is some of the new swag that's available in the swag shop. This is a 24-hour uh, 24 hour live stream survivor shirt. And also, we have the uh, raccoon who controls the weather. We have a swag, swag design up for it now, too. TLS Journey with the number one spot here. Michelle, Heather, Uppity, AK Mary, Southern Country, Overkill Mill, Chef Dila, Tony Spark, Animal 792, Josh Enigami, Prep Girl, uh, Ishami, Candy Thunder, Fluffy Buddy, Princess Tinkerbell. Who else we got here? Heather Marie, Faith1723, Fane13, Amber Ella Hickey, Jeep, Angel, Snowman Collector, Adventures with Pam, Joss BP, La La, uh, MX Manners, K- uh, Cassie Harrelson, Amanda Lee 8, Sherry Medic, Sue Ann 257, Kat Heathy, Movie, Do- Movie Do 64, Elise Newman, Alicia Suver, Brooklyn Baby 777, Mrs. M. Bash, M. Pickerel, Queenie E33, Erica Eternal, Dylan Sprague, Eli Hope, Juju Girl, Mercy the Hufflepuff, Kimberly Clevenger, Matt 626, Arok, Arok 667, Kasha, Justina, Blessed Wonder Woman, Ash Tay, and Tanya D, aka T. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Aaron Biederman sent a gifted sub over to Campo. Welcome to the Gosh and Bam. Also, Carol and Irasantu. Welcome to the Gosh and Bam to you as well. Glad to have you here. Let's get on X to go set up. And this one is going to get a spicy reward story. Spicy reward. Spicy. Whoops. Reward story. I can't type today either, apparently. Let me pin that real quick. And ladies and gentlemen, let's get Candy Thunder up here to talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen. Candy Thunder. 
Oh my god, it's Candy Thunder. Hi, I'm gonna pull Hi, this Tanner. pull this down so I don't feel claustrophobic. All right. Um, I feel like she has to. I don't like your. This car is not going to give you that satisfaction that you think it will. Like your wheel, <laughs> that you think it will. Like it's it's not is that gonna. Funny? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, um, it's not gonna provide that like that assurance, that security that you're looking for, that you've made it. Like you've already made it. You have a husband who literally wants to support you in whatever you do. You have a baby on the way. You have you and your husband both make 150k a year. You have made it. Like you're there. You don't need a Porsche to tell you that you've made it. Like you should feel that within yourself and not need that from a car. But if you need the car, if you need it and you can afford it and you're fine with secondhand, then maybe get a secondhand Porsche um, and then also a car that has more safety features. I, as a mom who we have five kids, I would not get that car because I would not feel like my kids were safe in that car. I would want something that is built for family, built for a safety. Like, And I think that you're going to feel that way once you have your baby. I think you're going to be you're going to want more out of a car than just feeling like you're successful. But uh, like, like uh, Alicat says here, he is a $70,000 sports car. Right. So, I mean, we don't know what that is. So, I mean, I mean, why with a baby she... on the way though, I, I think the point is you shouldn't need it, but if you do, and if this is going to, what it's going to do is prove to yourself that, that it doesn't fill a void, that it doesn't, doesn't achieve no. what you think it's going to achieve. No. If you need to prove that to yourself by doing it, then then say that. I think say that to your spouse, and and it's great if you can uh, if you can come to an agreement on that. I'm going to tell you from experience right now. You don't want to commit to buying a car without having your spouse <laughs> completely on board before you commit to buying a car. Yeah. It will cause problems. How I can you, how tell you. you that how would you know? I'm just saying, theoretically, if you sound like you know from experience that you shouldn't buy a car. If without someone telling. had done that at some point in a previous life before becoming a wiser man, it probably wouldn't have ended well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it would have created some short-term pain. I'm just saying. Um, I, I don't think this is something that you should go out yeah. and just do. I think if if you feel strongly mm -hmm. that you do need this, then say that and say, look, I just need this thing. I, I may end up hating it. And after that, the next thing that we get when we move on from this, yeah. Absolutely. The biggest concern that I have, though, is uh, the biggest concern that I have about this Porsche is actually maintenance. Um, mm. So depending on where you live, we're we're kind of constrained on on the the brands of cars that we can own around here or should own around here because there aren't service centers around. There's not uh, a Porsche service center around here. So that's yeah. one of the big things I would look at. Uh, Alley Cat, I think it was they were trading her car or getting her a new car because I think it was hers was like a 1999 or some some kind of well, it refused to die kind of car. So I think that's what they were trying to to trade hers in. But I don't know if you can afford it, then just I don't get two cars. I mean, I don't I just don't think you're going to get what you think you're going to get out of having out of owning this car. Right. I don't think it's going to you can get so many more features and so many more luxuries and it, with like you get more bang for your buck, go buy a Lexus or something different. I don't know. Here's here's the flip side of the coin, though. <laughs> yes, blurred. <sighs> uh, the flip side of the coin is that if she really feels stronger strongly about this, and she be, and she does because of her up, upbringing, right? He doesn't understand that because he didn't come from the same place, right? If she really feels strongly about this, and she concedes right now, that's something that she may resent later mm -hmm. on that she conceded sure. and didn't do this. And I think, I think you have to have the foresight to say right now, look, if I don't do this and prove this to myself, then I'm going to end up resenting, resenting, not doing it right now. And that could end up resenting you. So let me prove this to myself. Uh, my, my gut says that something that she's going to get, you know, she's going to have fun driving it for a little bit. And then by the time the baby gets here shortly after mm -hmm. it would be traded in and go for the safer, uh, the safer, <laughs> bigger SUV. Yeah. If you don't have like, think about like a car seat, if you're going to go like the Duna route with the big wheels on the car seat, we did not go that route because it was just too big, but it, 
if you're going to do that route, you're not going to have very much room in that back seat. And then yeah. if you don't do that route and you need to take a stroller, how's that stroller going to fit in the trunk of your car? Like he has a sports car. So, I mean, I think, or I mean, have his car. I mean, like, I guess Alley Cat was saying, give his car away. Sorry, I fell over standing here. You're good. Um, Give or make him trade his car for the family and she gets what she wants. That's what you could. But, yeah. but also, I mean, just because it's a sports car doesn't mean that, that you can't tote around kids. I mean, I've been a Subaru WRX lover for a long time and you can fit a car seat comfortably in the back. It has a huge trunk. Okay. It's a grocery getter think, and an ass kicker. This is, this is really interesting because I know it's a Porsche SUV, but Porsche SUVs do not have a lot of space in the front. They're more compact. So especially yeah. the Cayenne is very small. You I don't think to, you're going to get more, you get more in a Maxima than you would in a, like they're about the same size. Um, but I think it's really funny is that, the, um, like cars don't mean a lot to me. Like as long as it looks nice, gets me from point A to point B, like, and looks nice. I mean, like, isn't like black with dirt. Um, I'm fine with it. I don't care. Um, I'd like to drive it until it's paid off. This guy, like cars mean something to him. He's excited about cars. He likes cars. So like we, we kind of have a different opinion. He's like, get the Porsche, get the Porsche, do what you need to I'm do. Like, <laughs> an Audi RS6 Avant is still my made it car. And I'm like, someday. Eh. Eh, I'll just drive my car. He wanted to get, he traded our car in because it was like for the newer model, we could get more for our older model. So we put it yeah. against the new timing, one when Navy was born. Well. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I was fine with my 2017. It was good. <laughs> I liked it. I enjoyed it. I miss it still. Um, so I think there's just like, I think people are going to have different opinions because for me, cars don't mean that much to me. Like I'm, I'm happy with whatever I'm, I'm going to be in to drive as long as yeah. I can't drive a stick. So. Well, it's their first kid, so they could make it work. Smaller SUV, you yeah. fold down one of the back seats. You can make it work. And hey. I think that's a personal decision. You just have to, you just have to decide, are you willing to put up with the, with the limitations and shortfalls that it has or shortcomings that <laughs> it has in order to check that box? Uh, you're probably going to end up finding out afterward that it didn't really check the box for you, even if it does temporarily. But I think there's a pivot that comes after you have kids where like her definition of success right now. And she said, this is the, I made it car, right? Mm -hmm. Her definition of success is going to change wildly right. because for me in the very beginning, it was freaking Ferraris and airplanes. And I thought that's what it was going to be whenever I made it right now. Making it is is like having the flexibility and time to be able to do stuff with the kids and the uh, family. Pam K, he did. Um, he did drive a WRX. Ow. Um, I know what you're saying. Like it success means different different things at different stages of life. I don't know right. how old she it said she, she was, but um so I think yeah. it comes down to this if this is something you feel strongly about, say that. And say, I need to prove this to myself right now. It's something I need to do for me. Right. Uh, you're gonna grow. You're gonna grow out of it. You're gonna grow past it. But I think the the don't. more dangerous thing to me right now is not doing it and resenting your partner over it. Yeah. That'd be more painful uh, than doing it and finding out you don't love it. That's true. I mean, and I think he seems like he's gonna support her if she chooses that route. I don't. I mean, he does. That's not what he wants. But I think that he would support her. Yeah. Um. So yeah, when Ava was born, I had a two door um, Chevy Cobalt that I bought when I was 18 and I had her at 22 um, and I was still driving it then. And it was like the base model, like crank windows. It was, I didn't even know they may still made cars with crank windows. And uh, yeah, I like the base model, all I could afford. It took everything to make that payment every month, but I wanted it so bad because I just wanted, I wanted a new car. I wanted this car. Um, and I drove that car for 10 years and literally regretted it every day of my life regretted. because buying that car at 18, mm. I hated that car. I hated it after it was so small. And then I had a baby and trying to get a baby in a two door car, like, especially when they're rear facing is just, I could, I could not do that at 30, <laughs> at 37. Yeah. It's a pain. Yeah. And, and now I, I drive what I call the daddy wagon. Uh, it's yeah. Big SUV. Third oh, row. Yeah. We we have both to. of our cars have third row now because oh, yeah. we have 87 children. Uh, and that's, so we have no choice. That's what we have to do. Yeah. Um, but I think it's it, this is a personal thing. And again, I think the communication on this, you really need to self-assess here and determine if the potential regret is going to be enough from this to create resentment and create problems, bigger problems down the road for you. It, yeah. Yes, Colton, that's what I was saying. Porsche secondhand, buy, buy a family SUV that you can both drive when you right. have the kid. 
or there you go. three or cars lease that like you're talking about here. I mean, there are some complications on the lease side of things too. We've been through that, uh, but oh no, you've been through I've that. Been through that when you bought your car by yourself. And didn't he wrote me an email to tell me that he bought a car by himself? It was a really complicated situation. We don't have time to go through it all right now. I've learned my lesson. We'll put it that way. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have all well, the time in the world. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, look at that! Streams let's, ending right now. I don't. Let's crack this Streams baby open. Streams <laughs> ending right now. Yeah, he told me in an email. It was a really. <laughs> so the first, it was an email, and he was at a shoot. I couldn't even get in touch with him. When I read the email, so I just I just steamed out my ears for like three hours so, <laughs> that you were going to pick up a truck. I uh, know I we were close it, to the big D. It, cr- it like, created <laughs> some short term pain. So mm-hmm. my short version of the story is that uh, I was I was looking at a Tundra and and have a friend who works for the dealership oh. and and it was it was a hey if you guys get an army green one of these in like i'm i'm game and candy thunder and i had talked about it leading up to that point but what happened happened so fast that it was like they found one in mississippi or something and the dealer in mississippi who had the army green one one of the one that they had so they swapped it and like next day this thing shows up and i'm like I told them I was game. But why why didn't you tell me in the morning? I feel like I've already committed to it at this point because I was shitting myself. (laughs) That's why it was, uh, it was turned on his out of office. Yes. It was shit hitting the fan and me like, Oh God, what have I done? (laughs) Because I had like, because I had verbally committed to it. I didn't want to go back on my word. I could have absolutely walked away from it at that point. Uh, could have absolutely walked away from it. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's fine. It's totally fine. We We've, we got past it, and I learned a very, very valuable lesson there, and she really liked the truck, which is the moral of the, the story. The truck so. was very nice, um, and, it, and it worked out because, you know what, when when prices skyrocketed, um, the lease was getting ready to be up, and he was able to trade in the truck and put it towards the daddy wagon and it all worked out perfect. It worked out okay. We actually made money on the deal. Yeah, it's uh it yeah, thank goodness everything worked out, but but there if in the beginning If we had lost money, I he would I would have never let it go. There in the beginning, so, whenever I was like I have to do this, I've committed to it and she was opposed to it. I'm like I can't back out on it. It was it led to a few very very tense days. Look, this was well before the days of Dusty Thunder in this channel or anything, but it uh it was it was a painful painful time. <laughs> Overkill. <laughs> All right. There you bye, go. guys. Just remember Audi RS6 Avant. That's that's the one. That's the one you want, right? Uh, love you, Tiger. I, I don't care about cars. I knew I was going to get roasted. I knew it. It was inevitable. Tony, thanks so much for ha- for choosing this story to be the one that Candy Thunder was giving feedback to. Just a coincidence. Greatly appreciate that coincidence. Super duper. Super duper. Uh. <laughs> Good night. Uh, love you too, Tater. It was a tense time, and I definitely did learn a lesson. Um, in this case here, I, I do think that, you know, it may be something that she feels like she needs to have right now. And again, my biggest fear in all of this is that she's going to talk herself out of it or allow herself to be talked out of it and then regret it later on and then end up resenting her partner for it. If that has a high likelihood of happening, prove, prove to yourself what you need to prove to yourself right now. Just make sure you communicate your way through it. Had I communicated better? Like our, our shit that we went through would have definitely not been an issue. We wouldn't have this great story to tell every few months to you guys. Uh, it's been told twice. It's been told more than twice. I tell you that for day. I tell you that for free. It's been told more than twice. It's told a lot, but that's my fault. That's my fault. I get it. Learn my lesson. Learn my lesson. B75 says my husband got a Harley when I was on vacation. I was so pissed. <laughs> I am on the roaster turning. I'm just, I got an apple in my mouth. Uh, uh, yeah, Freddy Spaghetti, I get it. It's just a car. Like, get one later. But to her, where she's worked hard to get to her this point in life, it's, it's, it's a, it is her, I made it thing. And I, I truly think that while she acknowledges there are better, safer cars out there, she needs to check this box for herself. And, and again, she knows that she even knows it's not the right choice mathematically, safety wise, reliability wise. She knows it's not she knows it's not the right choice for any of those reasons, but still wants to do it. Um, and I think if she chooses not to do it, there will be regret later on. And that could that could create more problems than having the wrong car for a little while is going to cause. 
The kid will trash it. Now, the kids are going to trash any car. And I think that's the lesson you learn later on, too. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to keep your car clean. I used to I used to keep my cars very, very clean. And and then Navy Thunder came along. Um, so the kids get to an age where, like, you can start keeping your car clean again. And then a toddler comes back into your life and you're like, ah, yeah, I got nothing for this. I got nothing. But the car is for her, not for the family. Agreed. But it's something that it can work for the family. She has better options available and she's acknowledging that. But this is this is more for her than it is for the family. But it'll work for both. Rent one for a week. There you go. That's actually not a bad idea. Uh, hey, Kay Bond, I'm sitting in my trash car now. Hey, uh, mine's like that too. It's just, you know, if we clean them up every once in a blue moon, but they're just going to get trashed in the interim. Um, test driving one or renting one for a couple of days to see if you actually do enjoy it. And Turo, I think, is, is a site where you have access to, to more exotic kind of lux- luxury cards. Cars, uh, that, that would be an option here too. Like actually drive it around. Try to put a car seat in it. Um, try to use it like you would use a car whenever you have a baby. And that would probably be a really good test to either say, I can do this or talk yourself out of it. Hey, Campo. Yeah. Aurora, Ellen, uh, adventures with Pam K hunter girl. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Emily. See you there as well. Patricia. See you there too. Sid prep girl. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. We're at 750 of 15 hundo to unlock a spicy reward story. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and bounce to the next one here. And the spicy story gets spicier with the two updates that are with the spicy oh, story, too. A double update spicy story. There's mother-in-laws. There's all sorts of stuff. It's like a spicy story lasagna. Yeah, pretty much. Multiple layers. Multiple layers. Multiple It's layers. like an ogre. There's layers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, here we go. The next story that we're going to read is from the AITA subreddit again. This seems to be the theme today and is titled, Am I the Askonaut for not telling our friends that I'm rich? I, 25 female, don't like money talk. I keep it private because growing up, I've seen the things people will do for money. I've seen it destroy my brothers. My parents died when I was little and I was taken in by my grandparents who raised me. It was a very privileged upbringing, but they also raised me to be frugal and grateful for what I have. I'm incredibly grateful for what I have. I don't show it off or anything. I don't care for labels. Most of my clothes clothes are thrifted. My husband, 33, male, and I live well within our means. The problem is our friend group has just found out that I'm rich and they're mad. We've we had friends over for dinner and the wife of my husband's best friend went into our office to take a private work call. We've let friends take private calls in there before with no issues. She snooped around while in there and found documentation about my trust fund, my investments, etc. When she came out, she was mad and I thought it was just because of the call. So I left her alone and continued cooking. Hold up. Bish goes into your office, snoops and looks at private financial documents and then gets mad at you for not telling you that you had a bunch of money. That smells like bullshit. She started telling everyone that I was actually rich, showing them one of the documents she had taken from the office. So she took a document too. Cool. My husband took it off her and told her it was none of her business. At dinner, she kept going on about me masquerading as poor because I thrift, have a cheap old car, travel in economy, and don't offer to cover the bill when we go out. That's the big one. That's the big one that she's pissed off about. She's like, oh, oh, you're rich, but you're not buying shit for us. She's wealthy because she's not buying shit for you, friend. Our other friends agreed and they were pissed because had I because I've never said that I have money and never offered money when one of them was struggling. We ended up cutting dinner short and asking everyone to leave. These friends sound like ass bags. I've had messages from them, mostly the women being angry that I never told them I had money. I've even had a couple of requests for money. One has already asked for 50K to cover their student loans because I had my college paid for. I had scholarships that covered everything. My husband has told me just to ignore them and that it's none of their business. His best friend has called and apologized for all this as his wife shouldn't have been snooping. No shit. I've been very much frozen out from the group. I've been told that I won't be invited to anything until I pay my equal share. And by equal share, they mean I pay for everything. Am I the astronaut for not telling my friends I'm rich? No. Because look what happens when they find out. Holy shit. Not only is it none of their damn b- 
business. They violated your privacy by snooping, extracting documents from the office, and then showing it around to other people at this freaking dinner party. This is egregious. This is ridiculous. You need new friends. Do you do you have the right to know how much money any of your friends have? No. No, and the only reason they give a shit is because they want it because they're greedy, selfish, dickbag, prick friends. That's it. They're already asking, yeah, we're really mad. If you give us 50K, we'll feel better about it. We're freezing you out from the group until you pay your, your fair share. And by fair share, we mean you pay for everything. Can't imagine why you don't talk about this, OP. Can't imagine. And also, living frugally is how you still have money. Something your friends definitely don't understand because they expect you to just give it all away to them. Just by being friends with them, they're somehow entitled to a share of it. Ah. Ah. I'm trying in my mind right now to, to like half of me, half of me, maybe more than half is like, I'm glad <laughs> we're not. I'm glad we're poor is what my thoughts, my thoughts are. I'm glad we don't have, I'm glad we don't have these kinds of problems, right? I'm glad we don't have to deal with this kind of stuff. Uh, it's not having to these kind of problems. As OP said in the beginning, money brings out the worst in people. I think it is, uh, it's absolutely true. It does. How hard would it be for her to like start over and just have a brand new friend group now? And, and how are you going to build that brand new friend group? You're going to have to go start from scratch and do the exact same thing you did before and and live your life the way that you normally would. It's not like you're trying to deceive people. You're living within your means. You're not trying to deceive anyone. You make choices about how you want to live based on how you want to live. And somehow they've taken that as you've wronged them by deceiving them just because they want some of it, though. That's the shitty part. It's just because they want some. I don't I don't I don't know how you move forward from this OP like it seems like it would be a very 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 isolating experience it seems like it would be very isolating because you're going to end up if if people are just innately greedy like this and every time a friend finds out this shit kind of happens at what point do you just end up alone and can't talk to anybody because everybody just wants you for your money it seems very dangerous it is no one's business, Juju Girl, but 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 because people are greedy, I think OP is probably going to keep hitting this cycle. I don't know. Hopefully, you can find a group of friends that doesn't give a shit. It's they have no right to anything of yours. They have no right to know anything about your private life. It is, gosh dang, yeah, definitely okay to cut people off. Definitely. Uh, butterfly kisses. I, I the the story that we just read doesn't talk about OP stiffing the friends group. Just paid her fair share at events. There's no indication otherwise. It is, but because they found out that she's very wealthy, they think that she needs to be paying for everything. It's not a matter of of making them pay for everything. No, one of them asked for fifty k to cover their student loans. I, I don't think that's an equal thing. Angel, she needs to find uh, other frugal rich people. LOL. Yeah. Yeah. They're all in hiding, though. That's the hard part, right? They're all in hiding or they're yeah hard to find because they do a good job of, of not showing it off. The snooping was bad, but then to inform all the friends, Maggie. Yeah. 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 In all of this, OP is the asshole for not telling them that she's rich, not the not the asshole friend who snooped in her office and actually pulled a document out and went and showed it to other people. That's not, that's not the asshole. Not at all. People are dicks. Not all the people. These people are dicks for sure. For sure. 1400 of 1500. It looks like we're going to get there with the, uh, with the spicy story. She 
She didn't owe them anything. Ellen agreed. She doesn't. Yeah, literally does not owe them anything. It's silliness. <laughs> Leanne, when they ask where you've been, say, sorry, I've been with my rich, my rich friends who don't ask for donations or just my, my normal, decent human being friends that don't ask for donations. Squishy, this is different. There's, there's a difference between having secrets in the friend group. Just because you have a friend doesn't doesn't mean that they are privy to every single detail about your life. And it's not like she was lying. Opie doesn't say she came out here and she's like, she's like, oh, yeah, we're poor. No, she just lived within her means and lived frugally. That is not lying. That is not misrepresentation. That is nothing. It is nothing at all because it's none of anybody's damn business. <laughs> yeah, Tony Tony Spark would be approaching it very, very differently. Right. Tony Spark would be approaching it very differently. You'd be rapper rich. Like, <laughs> there would be signs, huh? There there would be signs. Tony's rolling around in the Ferrari and uh like hundred dollar bills flying out from it as he goes by. Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. We hit it. Southern Country in the number one spot. TLS Journey. Uh, Emily, Emily Nalu. Joss VP, Sue Ann 257, Hunter Girl. Movie Do 64. I am Jill. Fame 13, Adventures with Pam. Candy Thunder. MX Manners. Tony Spark. Rose, Rose Lane 66. Tonya Kays. Patricia. Oi. Patricia Leeds Crew, Eric Eternal, Dylan Sprague, Snowman Collector, Aurora 5129, Eric 667, AK Mary, Josh and Nagami, Justina, um, Imprieto, Juju Girl, Alicia Suver, Amanda Lee, Jenny DeBlock, Shannon Aaron, Blessed Wonder Woman, Mags Mazing, Ash Tay, Tanya D, AKA T, Ann M. Bracker, Vagina, Bubsy, Cassie Harrelson, Taylor Dactyl, Laura Canny, uh, Danger Mouse, Ash, um, Ashley, Ashley Lee, Prep Girl, Leithenia, Sins Chaos, and Lorinda. Thank you guys so much for all the uh, all the love and support there. We've unlocked the spicy story. We're gonna get into that next. It has two updates, so I hear. The next thing we can unlock is a cake story and a Caden Thunder appearance. Cake and Caden. How many of these are we doing? Man, yeah, hearing this music takes me right back to the 24. Whoop. There we go. We're going for donuts now. Hit it. And let's go. Let's go. It's a Pisces story time. Was that the sound of a cell door closing? Kit Kat, we're good. We're good. We're good. How long left of the 24 hour stream? Uh, Abby, this is actually just a normal stream. The 24 hour stream is available for viewing on uh, on YouTube, though. Spicy Spice. Was that the sound of my HP print or printing? All right, here's the spicy reward story, ladies and gentlemen. This is Am I the Astronaut for Cutting Off My Mother in Law Because She Told My Daughter She Hoped I Had Died When I Was Taken to the Hospital? She sounds pleasant. I-30 female was in a car crash. I had to be cut out of the car. I wasn't seriously injured, though, thankfully, but the other person, unfortunately, wasn't doing too well from what I saw before I was taken away to the hospital. I was told to stay in the hospital overnight to see if I had suffered from a concussion. I rang my husband and told him what happened. My mother-in-law got the incidents mixed up when he dropped off our daughter, 6 and 11, to my mother-in-law while he rushed to see me. My mother-in-law got the incidents mixed up when she dropped off our daughter, 611, to my mother-in-law while he rushed to see me. Okay, just had to read it again and make sure I read it right. The next morning, my husband brought our daughters to come get to come get while I was waiting to be discharged. Upon seeing my six-year-old, busted into tears and said, I don't want you to die. I comforted her and said, I'm not dying. I was very lucky. She then said, Granny said she hoped I'd die so that so that they and my husband can come live with her. 
Me and my husband were shocked and my 12-year-old confirmed she heard her say that. My husband said he was going to ring mother-in-law. When he came back in the room, he looked furious, but didn't say anything until after we got home. He said mother-in-law denied it, but after he kept pushing, she ended up admitting it. But she said she didn't mean it. (laughs) I thought we were close, but I guess not. I am incredibly hurt that she would want that and said said she wanted me and the girls. Sorry, this is. I am incredibly hurt she would want that and said I wanted me and the girls go no contact with mother-in-law. I told him he can have a relationship with her, but I don't want me and the girls to have one with her. My husband said he supports me. He then rang mother-in-law and told her what I said. She didn't take it too well. She came to our house crying and saying it was a misunderstanding and she didn't mean it and that we were taking it the wrong way. Oh, you mean you wished I had died a different way? There's you know so many ways that you can take that. My husband asked, what did you mean then? She just got hysterical and started crying and saying she always wanted daughters, but my husband was the only child due to her not being able to have any more after him and that the girls are more like her daughters than granddaughters and she didn't think properly when she said that to her six-year-old. You mean you're evil. Got it. She got so worked up that my husband had to take her home. When he got back, he said he didn't know she felt like that and asked if I still wanted to cut her off. I said, yes. He said, okay, and didn't argue. But it's been a week now and he's still very quiet and hasn't said much about what happened. And now I'm starting to feel guilty and wondering if I did take it the wrong way. And am I being the asshole? Before we dive into updates here. What? What? Yeah, this this is this is uh, this. Yeah, but but this this was grief of. The grief of not being able to have any additional children, right? So, but to openly say my granddaughters are more like my daughters. And that's why I said, I hope their mom would die so they could live with me. That's not a justification. That's, that doesn't make it better. That actually makes it a little bit worse because now, now it was premeditated, right? Now it was malicious. Now it was, um, now there's now there's reasoning behind it it's not like she's just talking crazy no she had she had a reason you get, there's no way to take it in a good way there's no way there's no way uh yeah she said that to the kids and now she's expecting to still have a relationship and the the scary part of this is that hubby comes back and he's like do you still want to cut her off well, yeah it's even worse now what do you mean do i still not want to talk to her of course i don't want her around our children what the hell how has it gotten any better dude it hasn't All right, here's the update. Update number one. Well, you guys were right. I decided to talk to my husband and asked if he was upset that I decided that me and the girls would go no contact with mother-in-law. He said he wasn't. He said he always knew mother-in-law wanted a daughter instead of him, and it brought back all the bad memories of rejection and hurt he felt growing up as a kid. Well, that sucks, but it's better than we thought it was. I suggested therapy, and he's willing to go. We're also going to get therapy for our six-year-old, as she now gets anxious if I'm not within her sight. Thanks, Grandma. My husband agreed that going no contact with mother-in-law is the best thing for our family. Our daughter's birthday is coming up, and we have yet to tell mother-in-law that she is no longer invited. Not looking forward to that, but that's the update. Thanks, everyone, for the lovely comments and support. I appreciate it. (sighs) Just don't invite her, and then afterwards, when she found out about, when she finds out about the party, just be like, oh, we thought you died. Sorry. Didn't invite you. Because we thought you were dead. This is just no, but knowing, knowing hubby's, knowing the, the seeds that, that grew into a depression more than him being upset with the wife about wanting to go, no, go no contact. That at least helps with solidifying him being on her side and them going no contact in here. Are you punching in? Uh, just a little context before you read the last update is okay. that the first two paragraphs are basically written at somebody. So if you get confused when it's it sounds a little different, okay. like she's talking to somebody. Gotcha. Now. Pretty much all of it's been confusing so far. So thank you. But it's also where the spice really comes. in. Oh, so. okay. Gotcha. All right, here we go. Here is update number two. I didn't think I would be posting here again, but here we are. Mother-in-law has been arrested. My husband's cousin found my post and knew it was me, and she reported it straight to mother-in-law. 
Yeah, we we know it was you who told her, Christina. Margaret told us all about it when she came over and screamed that we can't keep her daughters from her. She didn't even hesitate to drop your name and throw you under the bus. So, so much for loyalty, huh? You are not welcome in my home anymore, and you are officially removed from Sam's birthday list and our lives. How about you show the whole family this post so they can see how two-faced you are? To the Reddit community, sorry about that. My mother-in-law has been arrested. She came to our house screaming that we can't keep her daughters from her. Husband tried to calm her down and get her to leave. She wouldn't and attacked him. My husband had to restrain her, and I called the police. She fought them, but it got nowhere except the back of their car. The woman is truly insane. My husband talked to the police because I had to calm down my daughters. After all, they witnessed the whole thing. My six-year-old was hysterical about Granny being taken away. This is all just a big mess. That's the end of the freaking story. Holy shit. This poor kid, these poor kids, but this six-year-old in particular who who received the... Uh, the statement from grandma in the first place and now witnesses this, like how much heavy shit are these kids going to go through? Everybody needs therapy. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Um, mother-in-law probably needs a 72 hour hold. Mother-in-law has some serious issues. She's a danger to herself and others right now. And, and yeah, she has unprocessed grief that is rearing its ugly head in all kinds of crazy ways. I shouldn't use the word crazy, but it's crazy. She needs help. Right, This is not healthy. This is not okay. For her to show up and say, those are her daughters and you can't keep them from her. She, she's delusional, right? This is this is beyond Delulu. This is delusional. This is uh, this is dangerous. So that, 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 yeah, she definitely needs help. I think it's a great idea to get the, the kids some counseling now as well, because they've, they've been witness to some, some pretty hairy shit. Um, and then of course, OP, you know, you and hubby seem to be handling everything pretty well. Hubby is probably taking this much worse than he's letting on. He did admit uh, about all the mistreatment in his childhood, rearing its ugly head back up because she always wanted a girl. Um, so he's got some things to process there as well that are now fresh and, and mom, you might as well go ahead and hop in there too. everybody in therapy. Kids, especially. And, and granny, obviously, but, but the kids, man, they're going to have time. They're going to need some time. They're going to need some time to work through this. Oh, hand that rocks the cradle. Yeah. Uh, where's the father? Uh, so her mother-in-law's husband, father-in-law, they never even mention him. He may, he must not be around. Or he's just like, oh, she's going batshit crazy again. It's fine. It's fine. Title of the story was... What's well, been removed from my outline? Hold on. I'll scroll back up. It's okay. You're on top of shit. Okay. The title was, Am I the Asconaut for Cutting My Mother-in-Law Off Because She Told My Daughter She Hoped I Had Died When I Was Taken to the Hospital. It's a long title. Uh, cutting My Mother-in-Law Off. Let's start there. Start with that search and see what happens. My goodness. I'm blowing up. Don't know what's happening. Un momento. Uh, 184 to 650 on the donuts right now to get a cake story and Caden Thunder up here. And we are at, what are we at here? 63%. We're at 308K of the 500K likes goal. Tippity tap, please. And also, we're donut focused right now. Love movie dog or movie do. Is it movie do? 64 or movie do? Uh, Lee, Renee, Alex, Posh, Love, again there, uh, Gigi, Tanya, Fane, Renee, Alex, Shinryoda, Nat, Plantitas, Kane, Juju Girl, Gigi Adams, Kristen, Lorish, Myrtle Moore, uh, we've got Luisa, Castel, Duquat, Mandy Gray, Deidre, thank you guys so much, Renata, Anna Groza, you were there as well, Kimmy, Jennifer Scott, Angel, Heather8668, Lorinda, uh, Michelle, Heather with a big old here we go, thank you for that, greatly appreciate it, Amy Brumfield, Queen Tank, thank you so much, Renata, Anna Groza, Tanya Kays, y'all are awesome, Hallie Andrews, see you there as well, Alex Posh, thank you guys, greatly appreciate that. Uh, Angel Awesome says the story was shared on the subreddit for those who missed it until the recording is up, look, look at you go. 
just always on top of things. Anne-Marie Brinson, Lindsay, 79, MJ Newcomb, Hallie Andrew, Renata, uh, Anne-Marie, Amy Brumfield, Candy Thunder. Look at you. Look at you go. Hi, Tater. Uh, Drea. Is it Drea? Uh, Angel also sent out some gifted subs. We've got Janet Lopez. We've got Bye Felicia Sweet Treats, Angelique and Inez Mendez, Roberta Snyder. Welcome to the Gosh I Could Fan for all of you. Crystal Museum Girl, Renata Christie. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Betty Down says, as a mother-in-law, mothers-in-law like that make me sick. Uh, hell, no wonder we're so hated. I think, speaking from, you know, the, the position of a son-in-law, uh, we as a collective are well aware that it is only a small subset of mother-in-laws out there who are batshit crazy. Uh, and Candy Thunder and I know how lucky we are to have to have great, 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 great mothers-in-law uh, and fathers-in-law. We've we've got a great family support structure here. We're very lucky. Proud Army mom, you're good. You don't have to. You just you're here hanging out and commenting. You're good. She has some serious insecurities for sure, Car- uh, Carolina. I think it's she needs help. Like she needs clinical help. It's moved past the point of being able to counsel through things. Like it's it's seventy two hour was it seventy two or ninety six hour hold, whatever it is. There needs to be a hold in place there because she is a danger to people now. Lisa, I'm a mother in law. I stay out of my kids' business. That's the way to do it. Uh, SK, yes, yes, we're doing Reddit stories here. We're at 319 and 650 right now to get the uh, the cake story read, but we have one more regular story to go, and let's dive into it, shall we? 450, this is probably going to be our last story. We'll see what happens. This story is from the AITA subreddit as well, and is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Calling My Mom a Liar and Telling Her and Her Husband to Check Their Expectations? My mom got remarried two years ago, and five years ago, we lost my dad. I, 16, was 11 when he died, and my sister, Sky, 14, was 9. My mom's husband, George, is a widower, too, technically. Though he was separated from her for a few years, and his kids, now 11, 10, and 9, don't know their mom. So this means they feel like they were always missing that perfect nuclear family, while Sky and I already had already have that. We lost it when our dad died. But that is still our perfect nuclear family, and we did not feel like we were missing out on having another dad, and we didn't wish for more siblings. But mom and George expected me to see all four kids as equal siblings. They expected me to do for my sit my step siblings what I do for Sky. My mom expected me to baby my step siblings the way I used to baby Sky. They expected me to be physically affectionate with my step siblings because I hug Sky and kiss her on the top of the head. I sometimes pick her up when we play fight. They expected all of that because George's kids never had their mom. In December, I had to write a fake will for my homework. I basically left everything to Sky with some stuff for my mom. George read the thing over my shoulder as I finished it up, and he told my mom I didn't leave anything for his kids in this fake will. They asked me about it the next day, and I was like, Sky's my sister. Of course, she'd get almost everything. The three of us started therapy after that. They said they noticed that Sky and I don't treat George's kids the same, and the fake will was alarming because it would break the kids' hearts if that were a real scenario. They expressed the importance that I fulfill my obligations as an older sibling and treat them all the same and, most importantly, truly love them all the same. Same for Sky. She should embrace being an older sister, yada, yada, yada. A week ago, mom brought up that I had made a commitment to George's kids when they got married and had signed up to be their brother. They expressed that they expected us to be one whole nuclear family where, every, where nobody was treated differently and we all loved each other equally. They said that was what they were going to demand from us as the two oldest and the ones who are not showing that they love everyone. When my time to speak came, I called my mom a liar for saying I had signed up for anything. And I said I never signed off on her getting married or being a sibling to anyone other than Sky. And technically, I didn't sign up for for that. But uh, but I was because I would. Sorry, words are hard, but I was because I love Sky. Then I told them to check their expectations before they get out of control because they will never get the family they imagined us to be. I told, I told them that it's not what I want or want to work toward. Mom told me I had no right to call her a liar, and they said it was cruel to share that I had no intention of agreeing to be a good brother to George's kids. That showed how much of a child I am. Am I the astronaut? Look, blended families are tough, right? But I can't imagine ever being in a position where I'm like, yeah, these kids step inside the door and you treat them like you've always been their sibling just immediately. You can't force that. You also can't force love. You can't. 
you can't force love. That relationship is something that has to build over time. And the more you force it, the, the more they're going to reject it because it's not the kind of thing that you can force. Right now, you're making it work to have a relationship with their step siblings. You are forcing it on them, which is why they're fighting against it. If you allowed this thing to naturally evolve, it would naturally evolve. But because because OP's mom and stepdad are forcing it on them, it is not it's it's not going to work. It is not going to work. And yeah, the uh, the question here specifically was, am I the asking for calling my mom a liar and telling her and her husband to check their expectations? No. You know why? Because she did lie. She said that you made a commitment and you signed up for this. You didn't. Did you have a choice? I failed to see where you had a choice in any of this at all. You didn't have a choice. Now there's, if they had not crammed this down your throats and, and forced this perfect blended family expectation onto you, you probably would be much more amenable to, to getting to know your step siblings, to play with them, to do things. But because they're forcing it on you, that's a much slower process. And they have to understand that it is not magic. They don't blend families together and just and just be like, poof, it's like you were always this way. It's not Sophia the first. I'm sorry. It's and even that was a bit of a process, right? It is not the kind it, it doesn't work like that. That's not how life works. That's not how blended families work. That's not how nuclear families work. Do you think nuclear just that complete biological full family sit down there like, hey, you don't love each other equally. And it shows it's time to have a freaking family meeting about it. No. And guess what? Someday, OP, if you're writing an actual will, you have no obligation to leave equal anything to anyone or to include anyone. Nobody is entitled to jack shit. Not an equal share of your love, not an equal share of your money, not an equal share of your possessions of any kind or respect. Nobody is entitled to any of it. And this, I don't know, I don't know where mom and dad got the idea that they were just going to force this down your throat and everything was going to be hunky dory. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Any reasonable person would look at this and be like, yeah, that's not the way. This is not the way. Being a family is tough. Being a blended family is really, really tough. Can you imagine Candy Thunder if we had tried this on our kids? They they would hate each other. Yeah, it takes years. It takes years for them to really mesh. And had we tried to force it on them, it would have never happened. There'd be too much pressure on it. As teenagers, I don't know how that would be. No, as teens. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because OP is 16 now. Sister is 14. And there are an 11, 10, and 9-year-old in the mix now, too. And that's really tough because teenagers, there's some natural distance that gets created there anyway. Ah, hell, that's a, that's a nice cowboy hat there. I saw it. I saw it. It, I just can't imagine, can't imagine being a, a parent who would try to force this on somebody, a 16 year old kid and a 14 year old kid. It's unreasonable. Unreasonable. Hey, we met the cake goal. Look at you guys. It's 457. Look at this. Okay. I will, uh, I'm going to get through these things real quick, and we'll go ahead and read that cake story real quick. We'll do it. We'll do it up. And in case you didn't see this earlier, this is some of the new swag here. This is the uh, 24-hour live stream survivor shirt. And this one is the raccoon that controls the weather. That's a thing from the 24-hour stream. If you didn't catch it, uh, it's a thing. All right. In the number one spot, we have by a mile animal 792. Holy cow. You ran hard at it there, man. TLS Journey, Southern Country. Uh, we've got Love Not Hate, 477. Tanya K's Movie DO, 64. R. Groza, Candy Thunder, Adventures with Pam, Theo Dino, Rex Payne, 13. Casey Kim Walker, Juju Girl, and M. Bracker, MJ Newcomb, Tony Spark, Roberta Snyder, Tisha, 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 Tisha. Andrea Hernandez, Katisi, Dylan Sprague, Rose Lane, Rosalind 66, Lisey Lex, 10th anniversary of, well, show me the rest, Laura Lee, Laura Lee Moore, Adams Gigi, Ms. No, Sweet Hallie, Alicia Suver, Aurora 5129, Cat G, Blessed Wonder Woman, Heather, Lorinda, Jenny DeBlock, 
Kim uh, Kim Mathalon A17 Moore Marion Magesh Brennigan Minardi and R. Willie 68 thank you guys so much greatly appreciate that thank you sir appreciate the save what's she trying to tell me Got it. Okay. I'm getting some special instructions here. Okay, we're setting up a just because to close out the show here. We've got finger hearts. Finger hearts is the goal here. We are at 90% on the likes goal right now. You guys are climbing. You're running hard at it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Hey, Katie, thanks so much for the uh, the hearts and the mustache there. Jimmy DeBlock, Shay Miller, TLS, Animal, uh, Kara, Casey Kim Walker, Movie, Drea, Animal, Mandy Ray. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Cake story time. Let's dive into the cake story as our final story of the life. Today, we'll go a couple minutes long. This is a follower submitted cake story, and it is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Hating Cake? What did the cake ever do to you? You can hate, yeah, I mean, you can hate some kinds of cake, but I have never liked cake. Those words just coming out of my mouth feel wrong. It feels wrong to say those words. Hold on. I got to rinse it down. Blech. Ever since I was a little kid and they tried to feed me cake during birthday parties, I was not into it. It's mushy. It's messy and usually way too rich. I don't like vanilla cake. I don't like chocolate cake. I don't like cookie cake, ice cream cake, whatever. It's not for me. My entire family constantly berates me for this. They'll call me the cake Scrooge, the cake Grinch, the great cake hater. You name it. They give me crap all the time. It's gotten to the point where it truly grinds my gears. In my opinion, I am a ridicule. It's my opinion and I'm ridiculed for it. So I decided to bring a cake to the family dinner, but this cake is two weeks expired. I bought an old one and waited until it was even older and hid that from my family. So I took the cake to dinner and let everyone have a slice. They were happy to see that I had changed my tune about cake, but a few hours later, everyone started to get super sick. I wonder why. I texted the family group chat and let them know my misdeeds. We claimed it? Now everyone has bad cake memories. Now they get it. Does this make me horrible? Maybe, but I don't care. I got my revenge. Well, damn. Uh, damn. Uh, it's a live stream, Ziggy. We're live. We'll use this in recordings later on. We can clip this up to do our daily post. It's not right. Yeah, it is. It is uh, maliciously poisoning someone. It's not good, right? It's not. It's definitely you shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah. And, and even here, you say like, uh, does it make me horrible? Maybe, but I don't care. So accepting that it was a horrible thing to do kind of solidifies everything we need to know there. It was a terrible shit thing to do. Intentionally making people sick so that they adopt your opinions. Doesn't seem like the right call at all. Also, you're entitled to your opinion. Like, if you don't like cake, that's fine. We've got, well, you know, one of the kids doesn't like chocolate stuff. It's just, it's just how it is. It's fine. Everybody has different tastes. Not liking cake doesn't, it, it's fine. Hey, you hit the likes goal. Look at that. We got a big old thumb in my face there. You done good. Nice work, everybody. Heck yeah. Um, uh, Super childish, honestly, who does that? Isn't that a crime? Probably is. If people got sick and had to be like, uh, had to be hospitalized, they probably, yeah, OP's probably in some like serious criminal trouble here. It's not, uh, yeah. What did the cake ever do to, to them? You know, it, everybody has bad cake memories. There's something, he says, ever since I was a little kid and they tried to feed it to me during birthday parties, I was not into it. And that's fine, you know? Uh, mushy, messy, and usually way too rich could be, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Could be a sensory thing for them. They, for whatever reason, they don't like it. It, it was not, <laughs> does not give them to right to essentially try to poison a bunch of people who do like cake. It's even if they did ridicule you, it's not, it's that's not causation to go ahead and try to, you know, end them or at least make them really, really sick. It's not, uh, not cool. I w- wouldn't, wouldn't advise doing that. I think, you know, talking, Talking through that problem would probably be the preferred way to go. Yeah. Did they force them to eat it? They they say they tried to feed me cake during birthday parties. That's a bit about the extent of it. But it's also calling them the the cake grinch. 
the cake Scrooge, the great cake hater. Ew. Definitely not a good thing to do. Don't do it. Wonder what other things they have done? Good question, Miss Pamela. Good question. Was a short and sweet one. Uh, no pun intended. Um, but yeah, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't in intentionally try to make people sick. Right? It's just, it's too dangerous. Even if it's a prank, it's too dangerous. You don't know what kind of medical complications people have and, and trying to make them sick, which you shouldn't want to do anyway, but it could be just compounded uh, and exponentiated if somebody does have some kind of medical issue and then and then you're in huge trouble, right? It's not worth it. Bambi says never trust a cake hater. Ah, malicious bullying causes one to break. Maybe this is them breaking. Maybe that's it. Maybe this was the breaking point for him. Yeah, not good. No bueno. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Hey, Lacey Lex, Jurors, Amanda Mills, Amanda, Vanessa Rivera, Shan, Amanda Mills, see you there, Renata Anagroza, Marianita, Juju Girl, Shannon, Rosie, welcome to the Gosh Shackin' Fam, Lorinda, Dylan Sprague, Amanda Mills, Jacqueline Stoker, Jacques, Renata, Erica, Janet, Love, Roberta, Jurors, Fane, and Pickerel. You guys are awesome. Southern Country, see you there as well. Miss Pamela L, see you there as well. Thank you guys so much, Brannigan, Mandy Ray, Amy. You guys are awesome. We're going to jump over to VIP here in just a moment. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, the first normal live post 24 hour live, and it went by like this. Poof. So fast. Two hours just goes by in the blink of an eye. All right, we're going to get converted over to VIP live. It'll take us about 10 minutes here, and we'll see everybody in the VIP here shortly. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, wait. Hi. I'm done with The Bachelor forever. Hold on. Wait, forever? Yep, that's it. Gone. Done. Did it? Was it a finale? No. You just decided not to watch it anymore? I've decided I'm done. Why? He sent home the person I was rooting for. Oh. Now I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm You're done. actively protesting because you don't agree with his choices. He's an idiot. <laughs> he, he, he... They uh, sit, they, if you know, you know, I know, you know, if you know, you know, that I know that, you know, that I know that, you know, it's really frustrating when, when oh someone God. doesn't really frustrating when someone doesn't follow your advice when it comes to relationships, huh? Hey, <laughs> thanks so much guys. We're going to flip over to VIP and we'll see you here soon.